hey everyone, we've got another Stockfish 8 versus Alpha Zero game today. This game isn't as long as the other one, but it's just got some interesting attacking ideas in it. In this game, Stockfish 8 is white, Alpha Zero plays black, and Stockfish kicks off with 1e4, Alpha Zero plays e5, and after knight to f3, knight c6, bishop b5, and knight f6, and d3, we get into a Berlin defence, and Alpha Zero now plays bishop c5. And Stockfish captures on c6, doubling black's pawns. And c3 is now played. So white has given up their bishop to try and damage black's pawn structure. But black now has the two bishops. So it gets to a rather interesting fight. Here this position hasn't been seen that often actually. In another game, the position here actually went castles. And after knight takes e5, black played rook e8. After knight f3, bishop g4. Bishop g5 from white and h6. Captures, captures and h3. Black can uh, play bishop takes. And for captures, captures, captures again. Rook a d8 and king e2. Uh, white's actually got a better position here and is actually a pawn up. So black definitely wouldn't want to play this position. So maybe castle isn't as good. Alpha Zero actually plays bishop d6 in this position. So holding on to this e5 pawn, which is very important. So as you've just seen, castling will just lose that pawn which is a terrible idea. So Stockfish now castles and Alpha Zero played a very interesting move. They played Bishop E6 here. Bishop G4 has been seen in one more game where White plays H3. Black drops their Bishop back and White plays Knight BD2 to support the F3 Knight. In the game it continued Knight D7, D4. After captures, captures and castles uh, this is actually just given as an equal position which is quite unhelpful so we don't really know who's winning the game but you guess we have chances for both sides so both engines could have gone in for this position but no alpha zero decided to play bishop e6 so bishop e6 is considered unusual but i actually think it's just it just gives the bishop more scope and just stops ideas like queen b3 maybe because it covers these squares quite nicely but in this game stockfish actually becomes really super solid they play b3 and now they've got three pawns on the third rank just all being very solid and defensive alpha zero also has some defense they play h6 to stop knight g5 ideas maybe bishop g5 ideas which is understandable knight bd2 is played by stockfish 8 and knight d7 now from alpha zero knight c4 is played and finally black castles and rookie one is played by stockfish rookie eight by alpha zero and stockfish hits in the center with d4 i think capturing that d4 pawn would be super risky for black because white would just have a dominant center instead alpha zero plays bishop takes c4 stockfish recaptures and now i really like this move by alpha zero they play c5 so what's black done here well they've just doubled white's two c pawns and they've also just blockaded it, blockaded the center with c5 and e5. And Stockfish really has a decision to make here. I think obviously white could ignore these two pawns, but after black takes twice on d4, white's pawn structure looks really wrecked, especially that c pawn. So let's just have a look at some variations. So what happens if white now captures on c5 with the d pawn? Well, if the bishop takes c5, those two c pawns are absolutely terrible for white. And black's got an incredibly nice structure here. If rook b1, black can just play moves like b6. After queen a4, queen e7, black has no issues here. In fact, they're probably going to hop the knight into c5 at some point. And they control these nice dark squares like f4. And these pawns are incredibly weak as well. So Stockfish definitely won't want to take on c5. So is taking on e5 any better? Well, if the d takes e5... Knight takes e5. If bishop f4, again this pawn c4 is attacked. Bishop f4 is actually given as the best move, by the way. After knight c4, e5, bishop f8, queen b3 and knight b6, black actually emerges a pawn up. The best move is c4 here. This is obviously the more interesting variation, but black just ends up with a pawn up and has the better of the situation here, you have to say. So in the game, Stockfish didn't capture either way, they just played d5 here. And just everything's blockaded now. So both sides have got doubled C pawns. But Alpha Zero now plays an incredibly bold move and a pawn sacrifice to gain some initiative here. They play F5. 
And I thought maybe after e takes f5, alpha 0 plays something like rook f8, maybe g4. But no, their intended move now is to play e4. So, alpha 0 is attacking this knight, forcing it to move away. And actually the knight's got no squares except for knight d2, which is what happened in the game. And now alpha 0 pushes it again, e3. After f takes e3, queen h4, we see the idea behind alpha 0's brilliance. So they've just given up two pawns, but at the expense of white's pawn structure, and it is absolutely wrecked. So they've got pawns all over the place here, and doubled c-pawns. Black could easily pick these off if that was their intended target, but no, they're also attacking h2 with the queen and bishop. So white has got some defending to do here. Knight f3 is one way to defend. But black now has the option, they could either pick up the c4 pawn if they wanted to, or just play queen e4, and just slowly build up, maybe take on f5, take on c4, play knight f6, and knight g4. This queen move just shows the vulnerability of white's position. In the game though, Stockfish now plays g3, attacking the queen, and if the queen moves to like h3, white can just play queen f3, and to be honest, black's probably busted in this position. The two pawns down and black will have to do something spectacular now to win this position so that's just not going to happen so after g3 if you've seen these type of positions before you've probably seen the move but black actually now sacrifices their bishop they play bishop takes g3 and in the game stockfish actually took back with the h pawn but i just want to go through some other variations that white could have potentially played and would have got themselves into a lot of trouble if knight to f3 here attacking the queen, black can play a variety of moves. Bishop f2 is actually a really strong move for black, and probably why Stockfish didn't play knight to f3. So after king g2, black plays amazingly queen e4. And once white captures the bishop, black could play rook f8. And knight d2, rook takes f5, king e2. Um, black plays king g2. And after King d3, knight to e5, check. King c2, rook f2. This is such a crazy computer line. But after e4 and knight takes c4, black actually stands much better. So why does black stand better, you might ask? Well, white's position is just an absolute mess. These pieces are all uncoordinated. That knight is pinned. And there's no way to get this bishop out. Most likely, black's going to pick up this h2 pawn. Maybe even the e4 pawn at some point. And even though white's a piece up, it's not easy to defend this position. So back to knight to f3, attacking the queen. Black doesn't have to play bishop f2 either. They could also potentially play queen h3. And after h takes g3, queen takes g3. White's got two options. They could play king h1 or king f1 here. If king h1, rook e4 can be played. Black has now a nice attack coming up. Knight h2 is given as the best move. After rook h4, rook e2, black can play knight to e5. And actually it's slightly better here, probably due to their nice attack and their attack on the c4 pawns. Knight f3 and knight g4 could be coming in, followed by rook e8 to bring in the heavy pieces. I think the point is that white just has no defense. And actually two of white's pieces aren't doing a whole lot in this position. King f1 is probably a better move after queen h3, king e2, black can play queen takes f5. After rook f1, rook f8, knight d2, black just plays queen g4. And if king d3, knight e5 check, black's got a good attack coming up. King c2, just take on f1 and play rook f8. After queen h1, rook f2, again we're in a similar position as we've seen before where black's just got tremendous attack. I think to the human eye it looks like white's doing fine because they're a piece up, but don't be fooled, black's actually got a much better position here. If you really want to go into detail, I'd probably recommend that you set this position up yourself and just see the tactics, otherwise we'd probably be here all day going through different variations. But I just wanted to show you these variations just to illustrate how white could have gone wrong. But after bishop takes g3, stockfish didn't play knight f3 here, they took the bishop and queen takes on g3 with check. So the point is that black could actually go for a perpetual here if they ever wanted it to get a draw. So this is why alpha zero seems to have gone for this. 
King h1 is played. And now black actually has two ideas to build up an attack. Rook e5 was played in the game, but knight e5 was also an option. And after knight to f1, queen h4, and knight to h2. Black can play knight f3, which is an amazing move. So the threatening may on h2, and if the queen ever captures it, the queen on h4 can take the rook. So rook e2 defends, but then rook e5, and after e4 captures, and d6, they take on e2, queen takes e2, knight takes, queen takes, and play queen e1. If queen g1 to block, black can take on c3, um, and after bishop e3, c takes rook f1, and queen takes c4. You probably would favour black in this position. So what's going on? Well, black has four extra pawns for the piece, and honestly there's probably no way for white to win this position. It's going to be incredibly difficult to mate black with just the bishop, and black's got so many extra pawns. So of course you may be thinking as well, f6 looks really good for white as well, but actually black's got a lot of resources, just queen h4. King g2, black can play rook f8, after f takes g7 just play queen e4 check, uh, after king e h2, queen e5 check, king g2 and just pick up the pawn, black's in a much better position here, and it's probably up to Stockfish to try and draw this game with the bishop and the pawn, black's just going to try and launch an assault with all their queenside pawns, so again knight to e5 in this position was also an option, but alpha zero preferred Rook e5 here, attacking f5. So what happens if white tries to defend f5 with e4? Well, black could play knight f6, preparing maybe knight g4 with mate. So if rook e2, black can actually take on e4 now. And if um, white takes back with knight takes, then just queen f3. Now for king g1, just take on e4. Uh, and white's in a terrible position because they're going to lose that e2 rook as well. So that would be atrocious. And instead, if they take with the rook on e4, queen h3 is really nice. And after king g1, rook takes f5. White's king is absolutely wide open. Rook g5 is probably coming up next. And if knight to f1, rook a f8. Bishop e3 and rook h5. And it looks like it's game over for white in this position. So maybe e4 isn't that strong. Instead, Stockfish defends well with rook e2, it's got to be said. Alpha 0 captures on f5. Threatening rook h5, check. White plays rook g2. Queen h3 is played after rook h2. Alpha 0 continues the game with rook queen takes e3. And Stockfish now plays a really weird move, but it's really good defensively. They play bishops a3. So, that bishop is just completely locked out of the game, but the point is it gets the a1 rook into the game to help defend which is very much needed. Black plays rook e8 here, so getting the final piece into the attack. Queen g4 from Stockfish. And alpha zero plays rook f7. Stockfish plays queen h4. And rook e7 from black now to stabilize the position. For instance, if I move like knight to e5 here, white could play rook to e1, which would be very nice indeed which just wins actually. So instead, alpha zero plays rook e7, rook g1 is played, and alpha zero plays knight to e5. Threatening moves like knight d3 here, so knight to f2, which would be incredibly nice for black. White plays rook g3, attacking the queen. The queen comes in with check. Rook g1 is played. Queen e3, rook g3, and of course, you've guessed it, it's gonna be perpetual with queen e1. Uh, and rook g1, and after queen e3, the game is adjudicated to be a draw. So this is the first drawn game I've gone through actually, and it had some quite nice elements to it. Obviously, Stockfish was defending throughout the game. They, again, similar themes to the other games where Alpha Zero gives up material for more dynamic piece play, but this time Alpha Zero just wasn't good enough to defeat Stockfish's defense. I think the most interesting position was after d5, just alpha zero launching in with f5. I think normal players would just play a quiet game here, but f5 is really attacking. And again, after e4, knight d2, e3 takes, and queen h4, it's quite inspiring to see a computer go in for these type of lines. 
and just reinvigorates chess to be honest and it's just nice to see that attacking chess is rewarded even against strong engines anyway i hope you enjoyed the game please drop me a like or a comment i do always try and reply to all of them and subscribe to the channel if you want to watch more daily chess videos again thank you very much for watching guys see you next time